and welcome to our today's uh, Ask Me Anything session. A few countries have initiated clinical trials of the BCG vaccine for the treatment of COVID-19. The move is primarily driven by a couple of studies that suggest that in countries where BCG is used, fewer cases of COVID-19 were reported in comparison to countries where it is not. A similar clinical test is also set to begin in India where the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Bhopal, will be testing a different strain of the BCG called the MIP. Interestingly, this is in line with the advice given by Professor Das of the JNU. And luckily, we have him with us for the discussion. Professor Das, uh, thank you for joining. Before I ask you why MIP over BCG, I would like to know how you view uh, these studies that highlight the efficacy of the BCG vaccine in preventing COVID-19. Well, uh, thank you for having me here today. So actually, um, it's uh, a little longer story, but um, I would like to talk about it in, in little short. So uh, when the MIP was being discovered and then subsequently been uh, extensively worked out in National Institute of Immunology. So there was, uh, it has been um, actually shown efficacious for various uh, uh, diseases. I mean, um, right at this moment, um, I, uh, top of my head, I don't remember how many diseases, but it, it shows promising results. And also thereafter, um, uh, ourselves, myself, uh, my group, uh, in collaboration with Dr. Shangita Bhaskar in NII, we worked few things with, um, with MIP, which is Mycobacterium indicus pranai, and uh, which is also uh, known as uh, Mycobacterium MW. Okay. So uh, one of the things what we worked out is uh, uh, MIP actually uh, does better um, uh, um, uh, innate immune activation uh, in terms of um, uh, 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 type one interferon secretion as you all know type one actually uh, is uh, uh, actually is required for the elimination of the virus. And second thing is does uh, mount uh, TH17 uh, response, which is also another inflammatory subset, uh, but actually uh, TH17, the, I'm talking about T helper cell 17, which is in scientific term, I don't know whether, I mean, yeah, go ahead. So, so before I really get into how MIP is uh, working here or why MIP, I would like to know your opinion, your view on the reports, the studies that have come in suggesting that BCG is actually effective in preventing COVID-19. Right. So in, um, if you, uh, this is actually, uh, we uh, hypothesized this thing is long before any report uh, came in. Um, uh, myself and one of my colleague in, uh, special Center for Molecular Medicine in JNU. We often, you know, brainstorm in science. Just as, as you know, the COVID-19, it uh, uh, j uh, jumped from animal to human and first um, in Wuhan uh, in China. And thereafter, it's uh, slowly uh, spread all over the countries. When there is a, uh, spreading is uh, started, and then we what we uh, found, there is a uh, typical, actually, um, interestingly, the countries where uh, uh, BCG been immunized uh, or vaccinated, so the, their incidence as well as the mortality, fatality is much, much, much less than that of uh, those who did, never received um, uh, BCG vaccination. So then uh, we started analyzing the data, and, and, and what we found is actually even far better those who received the BCG vaccination, they are, you know, they got the highest number of um, casualties as well as the, um, the infectivity. And those who, who received, like India and the Portugal, those who are the, uh, you know, less, least affected. And in between, there are countries actually, uh, uh, you know, first initiated uh, BCG, and actually then discontinued BCG. Very interestingly, in our data, what we found in our analysis, they actually does perfectly in between. And also another um, uh, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, example I'll take you, the uh, Portugal, they uh, started, um, Brazil uh, started BCG immunization in 1920, and they had the uh, very, very less, um, uh, you know, with compared to other countries, less uh, incidence as well as mortality. Japan, Japan uh, started uh, vaccination is 1947. And they actually, per million case, per million uh, population incidence as well as casualty is a little higher. Iran, they started um, a vaccination in 1984. Actually, is even, uh, uh, you know, gradually it's even more. So basically, there is a, a trend you can see. And also, you see another solid example is the Spain. Spain and the Portugal. As you know, the Spain and Portugal is the smaller country. country. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, a smaller country and almost the three side, almost like, you know, surrounded by Spain. And uh, their food habit, um, climate and, or, and genetic makeup is almost the same. However, only difference is Spain, um, uh, they never opted uh, BCG vaccination, but uh, Portugal did. And if you compare the data from the Portugal, and the Spain, you will see the surprise, you'll be surprised. So from all these correlations, you say kind of uh, uh, say this is indeed BCG vaccination has something in relation with the inverse, uh, you know, proportionally, inversely proportional with the uh, COVID uh, incidence as well as the mortality. So, so while, uh, so while uh, the, the, the sort of example you've kept regarding Spain and Portugal, I mean, that is true to an extent where I did some math, the case fatality rate, which is total deaths upon total cases multiplied by 100, that is the, the, the solution for it. Uh, the number that comes down to as per world meter figures is Spain has a 10.29% case fatality rate, while Portugal it is 3.5%. Both neighboring countries, and this is primarily one number that you know catches your attention right away. But when you look at Brazil, it has a case fatality rate of 6.63, which is even higher than US, which has a case fatality rate of 5.3. Again, I mean, it's not a convincing number, but uh, there are some confounders that would sort of drive the result away from primarily looking at how BCG works in preventing COVID-19 confounders, like uh, maybe at what stage the epidemic is in that country, how much testing we've done in that country, what is the sort of disease burden there, or even national uh, demographics. How do you see these uh, confounders with respect to the report or the results that we're discussing? Uh, well, I mean, there is C. I mean, when we talk about this um, uh, uh, dates and then, uh, you know, incidents, uh, you are absolutely right to see, uh, for example, it depends on many, many, uh, many, many uh, things. For example, health system, right? So basically, uh, depends on the number of the, um, uh, what do you call it? That um, uh, uh, number of that, um, that uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, support, uh, what, what, the something what is called breather support. And anyway, so basically, the depends on the health system, depend on the reporting, depend on the, uh, uh, when this lockdown happened, for example, in India, as you see, in spite we have the density of the population is very high, still our number is very low. That is one. Right. Uh, one 3.17 uh, is the case fatality as we speak, according to yesterday's data released by ICMR. Right. So basically, which is uh, much less than the other, other countries, right? Right. right. So which is that's because of, there are two things. Number one, is, uh, uh, you know, in several interviews, I'm talking about the same thing. Number one, the we are smart and our government did a very smart thing and then hats up to this government, uh, they did early lockdown. So which is uh, one thing. Second thing, also basically we are exposed to mycobacter, we are vaccinated and also often we are exposed to various organisms. So they are, our baseline is high. So depend, that means what I'm trying to tell you is that basically it also depends on the your hygiene index. A country where so, so there was perfectly hygienic, 
because uh, uh, your immune system is not really trained. However, the places like India, and uh, it depends on the our. If you look at the baseline immunity is always uh, higher than the with compared to the high uh, uh, populations. Uh, higher high, you know, um, uh, hygiene index uh, countries like US. Yeah. So, so therefore, when you are talking about the case in Brazil, there may be little uh, higher, and if you but that maybe depends on the many things. Health system, the when this lockdown happened, and the, how the, uh, patients are being uh, taken care of, uh, taken care, etc. So there are many things, and also there are often time there is a difference in the reporting actually, right? So reporting the number of deaths, and uh, so that is what uh, when we talk about the individual country, I think that's that's not, you know. Uh, if it is a, as we all go with the statistics, I don't want to look at the one uh, simple one country, right? So that is what uh, we should go for it. Right, right. These yeah. these are times when we have to try all means possible for sure. These yeah. are difficult and testing times. So yeah. uh, uh, given given if there is some, uh, let's say, evidence to the fact that BCG vaccine does help contain or prevent COVID-19. Uh, could you discuss your hypothesis regarding this and why MIP is better over BCG as we were sort of encapsulating in the start? Yeah, so basically, uh, as you know, this is the hypothesis came from the simple uh, looking at the association. So basically where the countries actually received the BCG, the incidence is much less. Then. When we talked about uh, the uh, science, uh, I am entering a little bit in science. The recently, some of the papers is coming out the last one and a half year. BCG actually does, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, induces something called innate memory or the trained immunity or hard hard immunity, right? So, which actually changes the program of your uh, uh, immune development immune system actually during it is in the early if you give this is a changes the in, in, immune development so therefore that is one of the possibility and second thing is when you you know uh, sec, uh, second thing i would like to mention bcg although it is developed for the tb and given early in childhood in the in children uh, bcg protects from the disseminated tb as well as that uh, uh, tuberculosis and meningitis, but later on it has been found is uh, shows efficacy against the various other diseases. For example, leprosy, and um, uh, nowadays uh, people talking about uh, type one uh, diabetes, um, Borrelia's ulcer, uh, then uh, uh, cancer. yeah, did, uh, you know, um, you know, um, uh, um, the bladder cancer. And also there are uh, clinical trials going on for the colorectal cancer. And also it is now well, um, data is available in monkey model. It has been shown the monkeys is immunized early in, in, in young age of monkey. If it is immunized the BCG, they do much better when it's challenged with the, the you know, bronco um, alveolar uh, diseases. So from, all these connections, then what we thought is a BCG could be the perfect one. So and then I started writing to uh, to minister and um, uh, you know ICMR DG etc. And then I uh, I uh, thought uh, better uh, it MIP will be better than BCG. That's because when we did work in our lab, what we know it does better activation of innate immune system. As you know, the BCG, what immune immunity we are talking about, the against the virus, BCG is a bacteria, is a virus. That means it's a non-specific uh, response, right? That is True. an innate immune response. So therefore, if MIP is doing better innate activation, so there will, will be uh, BCG, uh, uh, MIP, MIP. Will be, will, MIP will be better for one thing. Second thing, we are also have seen MIP induces type 1 interference. Type 1 interference, you know, for the viral treatment of virus, 
the many cases it is you know type 1 interferon is given so second thing third thing is what mip is does actually uh, you know is induces another other t helper cell subsets as you know t helper cell subsets are required for the activation for the help for the b cells right who actually produces antibodies so therefore there are three things we are getting better than bcg is innate activation the type 1 interferon and beta t helper cell activation so therefore we thought so probably mip is better than bcg and immediately i wrote it to to um, our honorable science minister i wrote it to uh, icmr dg and i wrote it to everybody and in fact you might have seen in my twitter in early probably in uh, uh, we did tweet in uh, 16th of march after having all the data in hand with the correlation with the bcg and then uh, all this uh, you know uh, relation together i did write, uh, write to uh, government yeah But and then one, yeah, yeah one thing i would like yeah i would like to mention here although i am not at, at all um, you know related or i was not involved in in um, uh, whatever the current uh, uh, you know uh, clinical trial is going on no i don't know i only know from the newspaper that's it right uh, i'll come to that aspect as well because that's uh, a serious issue that you've talked about but before that uh, for the viewers i'd uh, like you to explain how a uh, covid 19 protein will be infused or infiltrated with the mip vaccine and uh, like will it be uh, once it's ready and let's say it's ready and it shows some efficacy will it work for adults or for younger growing uh, neonatal uh, um, sort of beings as of now how do you see the situation well i mean what we uh, proposed is we um, we propose is for the time being we are not really going for the Uh, in going to immunize or vaccinate the children that's because children are already uh, you know uh, less vulnerable for uh, covid infection so we thought to start uh, vaccinated those who are vulnerable like you know uh, uh, health uh, workers and health professionals and um, you, you know elder uh, elder uh, citizens and also Uh, those who are taking care of the covid-19 patients at home and and uh, uh, so that is what the one proposal was to uh, to vaccinate either bcg or mip whatever and uh, next coming to your next question is uh, what is how it is going to uh, help if you put um, you know uh, covid-19 proteins and with uh, on bcg that is uh, uh, my hypothesis with the scientific hypothesis let me explain you and we are working on on it and if somebody else uh, wants to work and most welcome but the, the our hypothesis is already we know bcg is giving a baseline uh, you know protection so as evident from various countries data from the various countries and um, so therefore we are getting one layer of immunity then we are going we are expressing the covid 19 proteins on it as you know for viral uh, elimination of virus we not only need the innate immune uh, activation as i mentioned but also we need the antibody neutralizing antibody right right so neutralizing antibody how do we get the neutralizing antibody this is a uh, uh, you know bacteria this is a virus so yeah. the virus protein has not been exposed so therefore so keeping the base as a bcg as a base and we are expressing the covid 19 protein on it so bcg is going to work as, as an adjuvant and the this is the protein as an antigen so basically then we are going to get the bcg mediated uh, immunity like uh, activation of innate innate response type 1 interferon and the proteins from the covid that will lead to the the as you know bcg helps in the mounting at the helper cell response and that will help in the uh, b cell and b cell will make antibodies so therefore the because of good hapten a yeah, good uh, adjuvant and that uh, t cell dependent antibody uh, production that will generate neutralizing antibody in addition this is is going to go in memory right 
that's because b cell is getting help from the t cell so this is often it will go to the memory so that means once this vaccine is vaccinated or immunized the it will be in memory restored restored in memory and memory i i, I don't know how long it will uh, last but it will certainly much more than what we see every year you have to vaccinate for uh, for what you call it flu virus as you know for flu yeah uh, it is mem is not they don't generate memory okay. they every year you have to vaccine uh, vaccinate so what we are going to make what we are making is simply you generate all these immune responses and you make the memory response so that it's a memory response for last for a long time and that means once you are immunized it will be it will be last it will last for long long time so and, yeah yeah please continue yeah yeah and uh, if you look at in average like you know if you uh, uh, for example tetanus vaccine it lasts for 12 years or more so in a uh, you know a, a person who is uh, like 70 have uh, been uh, you know immunized once i'm you know expecting this is simply guess there's no data so uh, you know it, it will last for 12 years how it matters you know and so, also so, so, another ad advantage on bcg is as you know bcg is given free yeah in in, in india and it's a very uh, uh, you know i don't know how much yeah. 20 30 rupees whatever yeah, and uh, this uh, putting uh, putting another uh, Uh, protein on it and the bcg is very safe is given only children so that is what we uh, based uh, we have chosen bcg as a best yeah so uh, while in theory this sounds like the silver bullet the world needs right now but mm -hmm. in practical terms how confident are you regarding the success of this recombinant vaccine see uh, when uh, in scientist what they uh, always do unless uh, you are confident you don't talk about it right i'm confident that's what uh, i'm talking about it but it is always research you know research yeah. gives you always surprise so i, I don't know what's in, written uh, in next so basically only experiment will tell okay and what kind of time frame are we looking at for a recombinant like this like uh, will yeah. it roughly take the same time as a new covid-19 vaccine or since mip is uh, already being used at a large scale i think since 1966 it's fairly tested it's out there could we mm. could we bring out uh, this vaccine in a faster time frame well i mean uh, see this is uh, there are uh, we are talking about two things so see what even if even if we immunize the bcg or uh, mip as i said from the very beginning in my twitter i said in absence of any specific vaccine we are certainly we can try bcg me what so no problem that but to make it more specific as i said unless the your immune system has uh, seen your um, specific uh, proteins or specific antigen it is not going to uh, generate a specific immune response right Right. so this will be much more specific and other than uh, correlation uh, you have something to uh, defend yes and there is uh, these are the uh, antibody responses and uh, these are the um, antigen specific responses that is what this uh, an, uh, um, vaccine is uh, probably better so but uh, in absence of that kind of construct at this moment we are in the middle of pandemic definitely uh, we should try whatever it gives even a little uh, you know efficacy i think bcg is going to do excellent and so as mip but what what kind of time frame are we looking out for the release of yeah, a vaccine uh, like this what if if we get all these uh, uh, reagents and the funding in time and uh, if experiments goes well i think um, i have given in my proposal i have given uh six month time and from <clears throat> in my laboratory i think uh, six month uh, in six month we can finish it up and then uh, rest of the regulatory uh, regulatory affairs and how the government is uh, taking and then uh, how uh, they are uh, they will proceed and how uh, clinical trial they will want to see so uh, that is what uh, from my thinking. oh one thing 
uh, if you uh, allow me i can tell one thing so one we are um, composing all the data from throughout the world one thing crossed in our mind that um, bcg although the, whenever i wherever i go for interview the people come for interviewing me you know, say no 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 there is a uh, clinical uh, randomized clinical trial is needed and this and that but truth of the matter is i think this is the ever the best randomized trial happened with bcg and unknowingly it happened why let me explain you although the intention was bcg was intended for tb so we what the tb works or doesn't work is a completely separate issue it works for other diseases and we see there is the perfect correlation one thing second thing is we see we have all sorts of samples all sorts of data means it is um, uh, throughout the world right people have taken bcg the countries taken bcg and some countries taken bcg and dropped some countries even never been taken so nothing can be better randomized trial than this is unknowingly for at least covid protein covid bcg trial happened for 100 years all the people say no 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 we need a clinical clinical trial clinical trial of what so clinical trial what what means you will inject bcg and then you will wait for that uh, covid 19 protein uh, uh, virus comes and in fact no so basically unknowingly we have done the clinical trial for 100 years with the best uh, you know um, randomized clinical trial right so uh, with regards to the clinical trial that i understand will begin next week at uh, at, at aims bhopal so uh, there are three groups that that have been identified as of now i'm sure you are aware of the details so there's a trial on covid-19 patients with severe condition trials on healthy people but those who are positive with the virus and trials on people who have who are understood to be exposed to the virus but haven't been tested positive or negative right so yeah. in these three cases how do you think the the trial of uh, uh, mycobacteria w or mip as we call it uh, how do you see it uh, work out or how do you what kind of results are you expecting in all three different cases well in all three different cases i uh, so basically when you are talking about those who are uh, suspected or uh, you know um, either the uh, you know uh, virus is found and non uh, or has not been found and then those who are uh, all found but mild those who are severe so basically you are giving to all whole spectrum right so yeah so basically yes um, and the result i am expecting so this is the best result will be uh, will find those who are mild cases and then the, and the, their logic is like this basically uh, those who have the mild uh, uh, symptoms basically they have some kind of immune response right so basically that immune response there means pre exposed pre exposed to the vaccine i am not talking about va- uh, covid virus like not virus i am talking about some uh, environmental uh, pathogen exposed that means they have certain degree of immune responses and if you give them covid yeah if you give them um, you know mip, MIP. so your uh, immune response will uh, immediately uh, boost boost and uh, whereas those who are already uh, disease is uh, mm, inset the severe disease you know once vaccine is always preventive right so basically once disease is onset i don't know how how it will uh, affect and one of the characteristics of this uh, covid 19 is it uh, you know infects your uh, bronco alveolar um, uh, a uh, place actually uh, you know and then it hardens and there is a huge infiltration of various um, uh, uh, type of cells and there is a uh, cytokine storm in because of the cytokine storm is a huge inflammation there's inflammation leads to the uh, you know uh, death of, of of patients 
so basically in if you um, if you inject uh, your what do you call it the meat in the periphery and periphery already there's lymphopenia in in covid patients already lymphopenia so in that case i i am not sure that um, uh, how effective it will be those who are i'm talking about serious uh, uh, we know uh, cases yeah cases and the, <clears throat> those who are um, uh, thus uh, maybe uh, suspected and they also can do uh, some uh, some degree of protection but uh, uh, you know uh, but um, sometimes what happens is many of us those who are suspected but uh, not uh, you know exposed or uh, whether virus is found or non non found i am saying on average they may or may not see good result because some of them may not be uh, vaccinated with the bcg in the in the very beginning so when you if you look at the data that will be a big um, standard deviation Right. right so that is what i uh, to me best bet is those who are having mild um, uh, you know symptoms and they they will do better in uh, this is actually guess this is a scientific guess that's it and, uh, this i'm just only guessing nothing else yeah so as you mentioned the cytokine storm has also been uh, one of the major factors for a number of deaths in china and mm. as well as italy i think china even resorted to something called actemera to control that cytokine storm but again there have been fewer studies to sort of have a good evidence on that uh, let me talk of um, plasma or antibody therapy that the world is looking at as an alternative therapeutic treatment as of present right uh yeah. convalescent plasma has been listed uh, as a therapeutic method by china's national health mission the who has sort of also indicated that it may work based on empirical evidence and recently the drug controller general of india has approved mm-hmm. clinical trial for convalescent plasma therapy and how do you view this as an alternative in the times we are right now so see this is uh, something called passive immunity so basically this is uh, basically uh, mostly depends on the antibodies right so basically yeah. so uh, this antibody uh, as i uh, from the beginning i said the, for the elimination of the virus you need the neutralizing antibody those patients who are actually uh, uh, you know readily eliminated the this virus and they are in their system their uh, uh, antibodies is readily available and now if you give them antibodies uh, coming from uh, those who resolve the disease and give them to a new patient they, they will do better but however one thing i would like to uh, tell you so how much antibodies how much plasma you will, you will infuse and depending on the virus load and the, also the e- immune evasion mechanism for the virus right or the for that matter any organism Uh, is uh, uh, very complex. Uh, some viruses are maybe hiding in the cell. Some viruses in the um, hiding in a place where there is no access for the antibodies. Ha! Huh. If it is antibodies is produced by the patient itself, himself or herself, there is a different issue. There is a continuous supply. But if you want to do the passive immun- uh, immunity, so there is always limit uh, limitation, right? So basically, I do not know it. Um, it may work but uh, with a uh, quote unquote that this you have one has to be very cautious right so uh, as a subject matter expert how tensed should india be we are in a fairly good condition or at least the numbers suggest something like that uh, do you think we can come out of this unscathed unlike italy spain or us <clears throat> so yeah see i um, Uh, from the beginning from the very beginning i said so india the incidence as well as the fatality will be much much less and i i did guess with uh, we are not going to cross even 15 15000 and the death we won't going to cross the 1000 i'm this is my personal opinion i'm not you know somebody may believe somebody may not believe i can tell you the 
the reason that's because uh, the number one already we are protected because of uh, you know less hygiene index with exposure of various organisms etc and also uh, because of um, our early very early smart lockdown so that is the two things it is uh, working uh, fairly well and if you look at the today's data also it is, we are just 15000 16000 yeah, and among uh, yes so whatever among those there are majority that i should not say majority at least 30 to 40% coming from the different hot pockets one thing one is uh, something called nijamuddin case yeah. right so basically if you remove those intentional or the you know all kinds of things so basically till date we are doing really uh, very good and in fact our data is almost a flat yeah. and we could have come out by this by this time we could have come out actually yeah and te- we, yeah i believe by may may 13th uh, or by mid may we will uh, will be absolutely fine yeah i'm tempted to ask this question uh, luke antoine montagnier he's a french virologist who won the 20 2008 uh, nobel prize he's uh, come up uh, with the uh, a rather um, sort of uh, attention grabbing statement saying that the novel coronavirus appears to have been developed in a chinese lab and that it has traces of the hiv and um, of the malaria and that sort of suggests that it is it is not something that has arisen naturally how do you view that well i mean uh, see i uh, um, i'm very un- I'll, i'll tell you the response but i i'm very un- uncomfortable for talking about so, something like this there are one thing this virus the closest neighbor is got uh, the uh, parental virus is coming from the the pangolin or the bat right so yeah, the, the bat sun. through pangolin to human right right so basically uh, that is what the crowd the what is the difference between this search and then now on this covid 19 covid 19 there is a protein the, which is that um, spike protein the uh, that binds to the ac2 uh, receptor in 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 epithelial cells and there is a binding domain we call it rbd in rbd there are six um, you know um, anchor residues if you look at uh, the difference with the uh, nearest covid uh, Uh, virus so that is this in rbd uh, region there are uh, out of six there are five mutations so it's a nature is uh, and second thing is in uh, where the s1 s2 their junction there is uh, you know um, there is a 12 nucleotide insertion so basically there are two uh, things and i don't know whether that nature does all kinds of um, uh, you know uh, things so in at a time there are five uh, mutations uh, and also insertion of 12 nucleotide so that may possible uh, i don't know probability and if somebody is intentionally making it that also possible i don't know i mean uh, so i mean he's a he's a decorated virologist uh, would it would it be uh sensible to rubbish a claim like that especially when he's saying that it is probably uh, a creation or a by product of uh, a vaccine that china was making for hiv and that the presence of uh, the hiv and the malaria in the genome is, is it could not have quote unquote uh, arisen naturally see i mean as i said the, i mean um, he's a uh, nobel laureate so he can uh, um, saying you know, sub, such kind of statement uh, he can escape but if i said such kind of uh, statement i i i have to swallow my word you know so basically um, as i said there are five mutations out of out of six you know six anchor residues which is yeah. uh, in nature it is very very uh, and if that happens basically every stage every uh, Uh, in nature all of a sudden in one day in one moment 
not all the five mutation happens, right? Yeah. And uh, I do, I don't know. I mean, it it may happen. Who knows? Right. Yeah. Right. So uh, I'll I'll probably take a couple of more questions before I let you go. And this is something important. So, um, uh, like you've expressed, uh, if I may say, disappointment with the fact that your advice or your contribution in the kind of clinical tests that India is about to begin by next week, uh, somewhere that advice, that contribution has not been duly acknowledged by the government at large. Your tweet, if uh, I'm correct, from April 17, it, it says, and I'm quoting here, those who are rewarded in current regime belong to Congress establishment or hate Modi or run signature campaigns against him. I don't, and I'm a BJP member, so no chance. No chance of what, sir? No chance of any credit? Is that what you're applying? Well, I mean, uh, see, this is, uh, um, uh, this is academics as well as the politics, sorry. And, um, you know, uh, in, uh, in politics, by, um, I'm also a BJP member. I'm a BJP National Council member, anyway. So, um, um, what I uh, what I tried I bent that um, uh, I don't know from where they got the idea. They must have they got idea by themselves, or they have if they have taken my idea. This is what they are doing doing uh, for the something good for the nation. Let them do it. So that's it. So basically, as long as if at all I can contribute, or if my idea helps uh, to the country, I'm happy. So uh, that's it, as long as, but uh, one thing I can tell you, basically, uh, I'm happy that um, this idea came in my mind, the, we discussed it, we, and uh, we have with this solid proof, when the, we are giving the hypothesis, uh, the, anybody cannot give the hypothesis in any way, right? So the, unless there is a, some proof you have in your hand, and some solid data in your hand, you don't uh, hypothesis uh, out of a blue, out of blue, right? So basically, so we had all this data and then we did hypothesis and in very early in March, um, and then uh, I was almost begging, if you look at the uh, you know, th thread in my Twitter, I was begging this is a uh, uh, science minister, uh, why not to make a, a, a committee to discuss the for, uh, uh, you know, you know, trial for BCG and uh, or me me for BCG and uh, and uh, all of a sudden we, I heard that that is already in, in um, uh, now uh, clinical trial is hap is being uh, is happening so I'm very happy that um, uh, it is happening. Right. Uh, I mean, your friend Anand Ranganathan has also echoed a similar sentiment. He said the government should have at least acknowledged the fact that you've been uh, uh, sort of uh, wholeheartedly being involved in, in suggesting uh, ways in which the government can handle this. And the fact that you've mentioned earlier in the interview that you were not even included in this trial, uh, does it somewhere discourage you? See, this is a, we are scientists. So basically, one thing I can tell you: if anything good, good, good is happening, if is you are involved, you will always be happy, top of the world. So basically, if this thing, um, you know, if they would have included me, I would have been very happy. So basically, and then uh, Fed does a stake in uh, my stake is also there. My theory works, right? So basically, uh, and now I can say yes, my theory works, but. Um, uh, I uh, can uh, you know, contribute passively, not actively. Passively. So basically, that is all. So basically, it's uh, somebody's working. I'm happy that my hypothesis is working. Right. Last question to you, Professor. Uh, how do you think the whole uh, COVID-19 situation has been managed in India as for uh, today? And is there a suggestion you have for the government? There is a, uh, you know, someone stuck. I, I didn't hear whole thing. Can I'll, I'll, I'll repeat the question for you, sir. How do you think the whole COVID-19 situation has been managed so far? And do you have a suggestion for the government going forward? What should we do? We're easing uh, sort of lockdown in parts of the country starting uh, in the coming days. 
So uh, once again, I would like to mention here what government did is really phenomenal, is unprecedented, is, is hats up to the government. It is actually we are lucky that we have leaders or leader actually the, who can envisage uh, the thing. So basically we did early lockdown and the uh, huge data analysis and looking at the data everyday basis. And then finally, they actually came up with the second round of lockdown. If you look at carefully, second time the lockdown is not exactly the two, two weeks, it's a three, three days less, right? Something like that. So basically, all is mathematical calculation is the very uh, um, a smart decision. And I think uh, we will see, we have already seen the uh, uh, carb is uh, slowly flattening now and the number of recovery versus number of incidents we are getting right now probably we are uh, more number of recoveries right at this moment so therefore i think we are doing fairly well very good excellent and um, uh, one thing i i am sure the government has uh, thinking in the similar line the after the th uh, 3rd of May, when we are, uh, you know, slowly, uh, you know, um, uh, withdrawing this lockdown thing. So hopefully it will the phase wise. And second thing is, we should not completely lock down, rather uh, uh, we, uh, in the hot pockets, they should extend lockdown for some more time. And why I am saying is, another, another thing, what good thing happened with the lockdown is, Within the first lockdown, after first lockdown, we could identify the hot pockets. What is the risk, right? Today, there are 57 districts in, in the country are, uh, you, uh, you know, uh, there's no corona incidents. They're absolutely fine. And uh, uh, we have uh, places where the hot pocket, we can, uh, we can find it out. And after second uh, lockdown, we absolutely know where the coronavirus is now confined. So you can lock down, extend the lockdown in those places, not all the whole country. So there is a, one has to be kind of make a balance between the economy versus the, the, your lockdown, right? So that is what uh, government uh, doing perfectly fine. Yeah. Right, so while you're acknowledging government's efforts, I wish uh, there is some reciprocation met. Uh, thank you for speaking with News Bites. It has been an insightful and a rather candid interview with you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me here today. All right, bye-bye, sir. Thank yeah. you. Bye-bye.